Hi, I'm Frankie and this is my dream. Heal the world, write the book and sell the story. Problem is, the world's falling apart. I can't seem to finish any stories and nobody has any money. in Taos, New Mexico. Weather, snowflakes with a droplet of desert. Mood, poetic with a dash of Ansel Adams. Let's go see what we can find. I found Mike Reynolds, an imaginative biotech with a wonderful vision for garbage. Mike, what's a biotech and what's your vision for garbage? A biotech is, uh, I invented the word biotexture because I, two reasons. One, uh, I didn't think that architecture was really living up to the needs of the time and we need a new profession to deal with buildings these days. And the other reason that I invented that profession is because what I was doing freaked the architectural profession out and they took my license away. And so I had to invent a new profession anyway. <laughs> And when did you first dream up the idea of a house made from garbage? Well, it, it wasn't like a light bulb that came on all of a sudden. It was me responding to the problems on the planet for over a period of 40 years or so. And all of it gelling together um, has caused this thing that we call the Earthship. An Earthship is an independent uh, machine that encounters the natural phenomena of the Earth uh, to take care of the inhabitants. By taking care of the inhabitants, he means it will get its power from the sun and wind, catch its water from the sky and reuse it four times, it will grow food to feed you, keep you warm in winter and cool in summer, have no utility bills and it will not smell like garbage. Describe the house you grew up in as a kid. I grew up in a shotgun house. A shotgun house is like three rooms in a row. Uh, that had went through a tornado and was bent and twisted and uh, needed a lot of heat to keep it warm and a furnace and, uh, and, and hooked up to electric grids in the city and stuff. It was, uh, it was definitely a, a, a funky situation. Did you recycle as a kid? Well, in fact, uh, that was before recycling was a word, but a lot of people in the and like my parents, they recycled, but they didn't call it recycling and they didn't get all uppity about it. They just, they had to use everything that was worth anything. And my dad was a fanatic to that level. And I think that did influence me uh, uh, when I first started seeing uh, news broadcasts about beer cans and soda cans being thrown all over the streets and highways and national parks. There was a show on TV about that and they said in the future, this planet is gonna have a garbage problem. This was like in 69 or 70. Sure enough, we've, we've got a garbage problem all over the world now. So I started trying to make uh, buildings out of beer cans since we had so many of them, since they were like a natural resource. There was an energy crunch, so we started making them make their own power. Uh, people talk about sewage going into rivers and streams and oceans and bays. So we started treating our own sewage. There is water being talked about all over the planet as something they're gonna have the next world wars over. So we started making them harvest their own water. And pretty soon we turned around and we're making a building that does everything for itself. Uh, and we called it an airship. And what sort of materials, what sort of garbage can't you recycle? We keep finding more. It started out with beer cans, bottles, tires, cardboard, and it, it keeps growing. What is your creative process when you design the earth ships? Do you sometimes just make it up as you go along? Well, I always make it up as I go along. Uh, there, is a, there are some standard things that, uh, that work, that are tried and true, and I base everything off of them. I use a lot of principles of physics, basically. I let biology and physics really guide me to make the, the basic structure of the building, and then if it, now that they're working really good, I decorate and get an idea to do art, so to speak, onto the buildings or into the buildings. 
but it all comes from after they function. It, architects go off onto the design and the, and, the, and the decoration of the building. And to me, the buildings are like boats that don't float. They're sinking ships, yet they're decorating them. My first objective is the boat must float. And by that, I mean the building must take care of people and the planet without using fossil fuels. What is the funniest fixer-upper at Earthship you've gone in to rescue? Uh, the craziest fixer-upper has been some of my own early buildings. <laughs> you know, I'm saying, why did you do that? You know, I've, I've had some, you know, in, in the effort of trying to learn how to do this, uh, I've made some really crazy stuff. And going back and trying to make it uh, be okay so I don't have to tear it down is some of the craziest uh, repair stuff I've ever had to deal with. With the earlier designs, were there any hallucinogenics involved? Well, I would have to say yes. Uh, there were, uh, there, there's both, you know, there's just absolute straight recognition of physics and biology. And then there's doing whatever, maybe to see biology better. In other words, I have traveled in all realms, let's say, of reality and unreality to be able to figure out how to uh, deal with this, this belief system that the planet operates on. So you've had a lot of obstacles in building earth ships. What's been your favorite stick it to the man moment? The best thing like that is learning that I don't need to stick it to the man. I just ignore him. Earthships make it so you can ignore the man, you know, uh, the, whatever the man is. The man is the head of the establishment whose hobbies include making money, closing doors, citing policies and procedures, buying you and expensive trophies, cubicles with no windows, and saying, no, not negotiable. I've done a lot of fighting of the man, fighting the government, fighting the law, and, and, and joining the law and trying to... I've worked with them in every way possible until I suddenly got the idea. In my mind, I can, I can see a way of life where they don't exist. Not, not that they're going to disappear. It's really that I'm disappearing from them. I'm disappearing from the need of them. And I'm finding places on this planet where that's possible. You know, there's, there's lots of places where, you know, the, the law just doesn't go. It's too hard for them to get there. You know, nobody wants that land. You gotta go back to where all those utilities and things are available, and then that's where the man lives. So I can go out there now with this vessel anywhere on this planet, in mountains and, and Amazon and, and, and deserts. I can go anywhere and make a life, and the man doesn't want to go there anyway. Where else do you draw inspiration? Intuition, imagination, and inspiration, like those are the things that <clears throat> I simply uh, try to nurture, let's say. Uh, and, I, and I also think that our, our typical world, due to its constraints and its rules and its regulations and its gravity, tends to squelch and inhibit all three of those. I think one of the biggest inspirations to let me get through that is looking really carefully at animals and plants. You know, they are the truth. That's all they are is the truth. There's no animal or plant that's going to deceive you, you know, or, or you know, and even the, the phenomenon, like the sun. I mean, you know, the sun, it's perfectly honest. You stay out in it too long, it'll burn you. It's just honest. It's just there. It's, it shines on every lizard, plant, animal, snail, person, race. It shines on everything. I'm just looking for those honest directions and they all lie outside the realm of humans. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I could tell the world one thing, it would be uh, almost any direction is better than the direction we're going, so you really can't go wrong. What else did I find in Taos, New Mexico? 
I found a thriving local toilet business. I found a portable from Bob's yard. I found Ansel Adams' photographic playground and Senior Siesta lot. Oh, and I found the world's smallest church. Mark Twain once said, buy land, they're not making it anymore. And I would like to add, and on that land, collect garbage, build an earthship, and have yourself a shelter from the storm.